best trained weapon really is the best trained operator. So you can have the best equipment in the world, uh, but if you don't know what it can do and fight to its full potential, and your mechanics and supply people to also support it, uh, it's no good to you. I'm uh, Glenn Miller. I was born in Brantford, Ontario, and I served with the Royal Canadian Horse Artillery in the Royal Canadian Artillery. So I ended up going to Germany because my um, stepfather was in the military and he was posted to Europe as part of uh, NATO's commitment. An attack on any one of those partners is an attack on all, that's the premise of NATO, and that was primarily against the Warsaw Pact and, and Russia. Um, so it was a form of detente, and that's why we ended up in Europe. Our family went over, I was uh, 12 years old, starting high school in grade nine, and I did all my high school in grade nine, so uh, certainly as a student in Canada, you hear about um, European history, you read about it, or I had the opportunity to live it as well. Our high school itself was an old SS barracks, and we actually had wooden gun racks in the halls, which we tried to sit in as a cubby hole because there's not a lot happening there. It was quite uh, an adventure, not knowing what to expect. I found out uh, just by going to the play park, there's about six other uh, families in our small village. Uh, that was during the summer time frame. About come September when we went to school, uh, that's where you kind of got a better sense that you were not the only Canadian in Germany. It was the largest Canadian population outside Canada. It's about 15,000 Canadians between Laar and Baden. You got to see a lot of green buildings, uh, hangars, uh, tanks, helicopters, planes that you don't normally expose to see. So you got a better sense of the bigger picture of why you were there and the equipment used. And I do remember as part of the equipment of, of NATO in the Cold War, um, they would have on occasion equipment land in to show kids what the tools were. And we had an American Cobra attack helicopter. And I'd seen this, but to actually see it firsthand, you know it's very long, but it's only shoulder wide. It was so very narrow, which I thought was kind of pretty cool. And for any young student, seeing the helicopter land and take off from 40 feet away is all, always fascinating. By joining the Canadian Forces, my biggest decision was uh, being influenced by the Cold War. Uh, only because I uh, had an opportunity to join the Royal Canadian Dragoon Cadet Corps and I spent four years doing that and that had shaped my uh, reason to really join because uh, I thought it was exciting and I wanted to uh, drive a tank. I wanted to be involved with tanks because that's what that particular unit was involved in. Uh, however, when we went to join, uh, that wasn't available at the time so I ended up in the artillery. So this is a um a training aid to help us understand the control panel inside the radar. And during my initial training, we had a couple American A-10 planes providing support for air artillery, how to call our airplanes and do their fire with bombs or rockets or guns. So it was about two o'clock and we see a blip on the radar. So this is too easy. Obviously, I think I have very good equipment. Uh, a very humbling experience for me was um, as the blip got closer, then in theory I could push the button and engage it with my guns. Just before I started to track that blip, I heard the turbofan of the plane. And it didn't make sense to me, because he's 10 kilometers away. Well, he was the sacrificial lane, lane duck to fool me, the operator. His wingman went in low, and it would have pulled the trigger 10,000 yards away. So I was already dead. So that was a very humbling experience, but one you never forgot. My first course was on a 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. It was actually made uh, during World War II. Um, so it wasn't exactly state of the art at the time. Primarily a larger machine gun. Uh, the range of that time was two kilometers for anti-aircraft. As part of Canada's commitment, we uh, train as if we're going to war. And so the, the TAM is a tactical air meet of different NATO countries and they just happen to use that base as a staging area. So there's a variety of different NATO based countries with their various different aircraft using the base. Our specific role there uh, was the protection of the airfield uh, from attack. So we had um, one 28 air, airfield air defense battery at that time consisting of roughly uh, 30 people it was protecting the entire airfield. NATO is a defensive measure. Uh, but if they were to attack first, uh, we're talking minutes of air time from their base in East Russia, or correction, East Germany, to West Germany, where I was stationed. And so there might be 30 aircraft that would take off all at once to swarm us. Some would get picked off along the way at different levels. Uh, but at the end of the day, you could have 20 aircraft swarming the base 
At that time, we had the, the 40 millimeter boffins and the blowpipe missiles, and that was it. And it wasn't quite what was required to do the job. Some of my most memorable experiences of having the ability to brief the Minister of National Defence on uh, my role and uh, what we could or couldn't do primarily. I didn't have any illusion of surviving the first air attack. Uh, and it's because of the equipment. Um, so he was a little shocked at that. I do remember uh, one time we got our, our new anti-aircraft guns, which were designed for um, an airfield, uh, but Canada's trying to maximize its, its uh, role. So now we're trying to drag it all over the countryside, which isn't what it was designed for. We got these brand new guns, uh, but the trucks using them couldn't tow them properly. Uh, we'd even get them stuck on the airfield because they didn't have the towing capacity. So we're in a farmer's field and uh, this German lady in a nice wooden pitchfork came out and said, get out, get out, get out, and uh, was threatening me with the pitchfork, which I, I kind of laughed, but uh, she was pretty serious. So it was kind of funny. So the morale during the, uh, my tour in, in Germany was quite high uh, because you're, uh, you're Canadian and you're working and living with Canadians and their families, so you're a very tight-knit group. Uh, actually, a lot of the gate guards for the base were wives. Uh, that was just a, one of the jobs that was available. Um, and so a lot of the wives were employed on the base. And so you got to see them at both the work function and also social functions. Our particular trade, there's so few of us, um, it was an expectation, a reasonable expectation, that we'd spend two-thirds of our entire career in Germany because that's the, our job. Uh, during the Cold War, as the tensions got better and the, and the Berlin Wall came down, um, the Canadian government decided to close Laren Baden. And so I had done one tour, knowing I was expecting to do many, many more tours, and that, that opportunity was gone. So the medals I was uh, presented during my career, um, starting over here on the right is the Canadian Forces Decoration. And after that's after 12 years of continuous good service. And after another 10 years, you get this bar. And if you did another 10 years, you get a second bar or additional bars. Uh, this one here is the Canadian uh, Diamond Jubilee Medal. And this one here is the NATO Medal for the former Yugoslavia. Now, had I stayed three more days, we were in transition, I would have been entitled to another medal that followed this one, but I was sent home three days prior. Remembrance means a lot to me as a soldier, and as a father, and as a person uh, who's involved going to schools and trying to impress that to other um, youth. To be able to impress upon Canadian students um, and the education system that although Canada has not really been to war in any great extent since um, Korea, really. Um, when Canada goes in the future and um, we go somewhere else, wherever that might be, uh, you never know who's impacted. So have some empathy and compassion and care.